It feels like everyone and their mother and their pet rock has had some sort of cosmetic work done these days. And don't get me wrong, I support people being allowed to do whatever they want with their bodies, but I want to raise awareness about the dangers and the toxicity that can come along with this. If cosmetic surgery is this romanticized, magical cure-all that will make you the most confident being to walk this earth, then why are there so many examples of people that regret it? Full transparency, as a beauty person, had a ton of lip filler over the years, and Botox, I stopped in 2018 because I just felt so too much. I just felt like hiding, you know? For a long time, beauty was about hiding for me. And now I feel like maybe it's not. Since I stopped getting fillers and Botox, you know, I have done things that I, you know, regret and luckily there are things that dissolve and go away. So that's good because it's not always been my best look. Just doing too many fillers and then having to have them removed, which thank God they are removable, but I think I messed, I messed up a lot. And now luckily I can, you know, I was able to reverse most of that. I feel so much more socially awkward now and it's ironic really. You know, I wanted to get this procedure done to boost my confidence, but it's had the opposite effect. It's made me feel so much more self-conscious. You watch my face kind of shape shift uh, with, you know, fillers and Botox and all that random shenanigans. After everything I've done, guess what? I do not feel any prettier, no better, no nothing. In theory, I'm a million percent closer to the standard of beauty and a million percent less confident. Well, after months of doing research and tarnishing my algorithm, I have some answers for you. Since 2020, cosmetic surgeries have increased nearly 50%. That's a lot. And just to be clear, in this video, I am going to be talking about cosmetic surgery. Plastic surgery is deemed medically necessary, while cosmetic surgery is not. I feel there are two ways that getting cosmetic surgery can be done. There's the first way where you get one thing done and you're just happy it really does improve your quality of life. I've literally seen it change people's lives. I've literally seen people come in that have not necessarily been bullied, but close to it or no self-confidence, you know, coming in head down, not wanting to go do things, not wanting to socialize, not wanting to pursue their dreams to fixing one or two things and completely changing their life. And that's the last thing you ever do. You don't become addicted. You don't become dependent on it. And then there's the second way where you can and do become addicted. And getting that surgery wasn't actually the answer to your problem in the first place. And in both of these situations, I can be empathetic towards and understand because of societal pressures and standards, which we will get into later. Some of the most popular surgeries out there these days are Botox, which is a neurotoxin. Keep that word in mind, toxin, you know, like toxic, which paralyzes the muscles in your face in order to reduce the wrinkles that happen when you show just normal human emotion. The next one is filler, which is a fairly new thing that people are getting done and a very popular one. This is basically a synthetic version of hyaluronic, hyaluronic, I can never say this word, please help me, hyaluronic acid. There we go. They use this to actually fill in wrinkles that are already there and any areas of your face that lack volume. A BBL, I'm sure you've heard of this one. This is a procedure done where they inject fat into your butt. Yeah, doesn't that sound delightful? This is actually the most dangerous one, but we'll get into that in a second. And then we have the almighty breast augmentation, which has been around for a long time. We all know what this one is, right? Silicone, yeah. Now let me make it clear that there are risks with any surgery, but I'm specifically gonna talk about the surgeries that I just mentioned. So like I said, the BBL is the most dangerous. Listen to this crazy statistic I learned while I was researching. One in 3,000 women will pass away from getting this done. Upwards up until a few years ago, we thought that this was the safest way to enhance the buttock. Unfortunately, studies have now shown that it has the highest mortality rate, death rate in all of plastic surgery. There was a study that showed that literally one in 3,000 women who undergo this surgery die from it. And these are healthy pre-screened women. So these, these are healthy. Like these are young women. Folks. And if the fat goes into a blood vessel, it goes straight to your heart slash lungs. It can block your blood flow and you instantly become unalived. Also, this is fairly new. So we have no idea how this is going to look in 10, 20 years in the future in general. It might look a little wild. Then we have the breast augmentation, which this one has been known to have a lot of issues. Back in the 90s, when women first started feeling sick from their implants, they were actually recalled and considered considered unsafe. For some reason, they decided that it was safe again, even though people are still getting sick from it. What's happening is their bodies are rejecting these implants because usually when you put a foreign object into your body, your body's going to try to reject it in order to protect you. There's actually a term now called breast implant illness. So it's very common that women are 
getting this illness and and they end up actually removing the breast implants altogether and now let's talk about botox and filler because this when i told y'all earlier that there's the second route of people become addicted to getting surgery this is what i'm talking about because once you get botox or filler done once you're pretty much stuck doing it for the rest of your life for botox let me tell you a very chilling statistic one in six people will have a negative reaction to botox it's in the name botox botoxin toxic the more botox you get the more your body is going to build up resistance so the more you're going to have to get filler hasn't been around as long as botox so we really don't know the lasting effects of it but there's been many negative side effects already discovered about this at first injectors would try to say it's just hyaluron hy see there i go again hyaluronic acid your body already makes that so it's totally natural it's totally okay it's totally safe right wrong this is actually just a fake synthetic version like a man-made version of that chemical that your body automatically produces it's not the same thing they also try to say that it would dissolve within a short amount of time but people are actually now starting to discover that it does not dissolve it can last for years in your face people say a filler lasts a year or two years or 18 months that's from the approval trial done by the company to show a result they've never studied how long it is lasting in the face but clinicians like me and everyone else injecting these products we know they last tens of years in many people not just where you got it it can actually migrate there's been so many stories of people that got lip filler and it migrates up and then their face just starts to look deformed and just strange also something really scary about filler it's been found to block lymphatic channels in your body which carry toxins and wastes out of your body you see a team of doctors used a special camera to examine the lymphatics in 50 women who've had facial filler a special dye was injected into the women's faces which the camera could then track as it moved through the women's lymphatic channels. The lymphatics, so you know, are in our body to clear impurities and waste products. It fights infection and maintains a healthy, here it is, immunity. Your lymphatic system would normally have drained that dye you see out almost immediately, but not with the filler present. So that's why so many people can face problems with it, especially after it's been in your face for so many years. Even if you decide to go get it dissolved, sometimes it doesn't even fully dissolve. And the dissolved agent that they use can actually kill your natural collagen. Needless to say that you will not look the same after getting this you will not look the same as you did before you get botox or filler that's why i said people that once they get it they're stuck doing it for pretty much forever because a lot of people i think they expect that if they stop doing it their face is just going to go back to normal but it doesn't so it can be very addicting the other ironic parts about both of these is that people usually get them because they want to look younger right they want their skin to look healthier and more glowy but it actually ends up doing the opposite it makes people look older that's why if you've heard about people talking about how gen z is aging like milk that's what people have been saying now very popular thing that everybody's talking about it's because gen z is getting botox and filler more and more because they've been lied to injectors have tried to tell them or just people on the internet have come up with this myth that there is such a thing as preventative botox and they try to claim that if you start getting it while you're young then you're just gonna look younger for longer and it's, it's just gonna be so much better for you right no it prevents your natural face development it's scary stuff man i feel like people don't talk about this enough like all i hear about and see is just people being like look at me i'm so happy with my new lips i am happy that they're happy i want people to be happy i want people to do whatever they want with their body and their lives but i just can't help to feel like what about in a few years like how is that going to look in a few years when you feel like you have to keep getting it done and it just starts looking worse and worse and it just makes me feel like they haven't been told these things that i'm telling you now so that's why i want to share this and i really want to help people because i feel like it's getting way more popular and why is that i'll tell you why social media social media is definitely responsible for a lot of this because have you ever used one of those filters that just totally changes your face and you don't even look like yourself and it's kind of jarring and then when the filter comes off it's even more jarring it really chips away your self-esteem and that is so sad because so many people are just naturally really beautiful whenever i first was introduced to these filters i personally noticed definitely a negative effect on my mental health and my self-esteem i don't think i'm the only one am i the only one out there that has ever felt like wow that filter just made me feel feel really bad about myself. I don't think I am. And if you've ever experienced this, let me know in the comments. But I just feel like the best thing that I could have done for myself and probably the best thing that you could also do if you feel like you're going through the same thing is just stop using filters altogether. Like, just don't use them. I understand if it's like a cute one. Sometimes I'll use a cute one that's like Hello Kitty. But when it comes to the ones that make you look like a totally different person, no, keep it away from me. So yeah, I feel like that's definitely had a negative effect on us. I mean, we can literally see how we would look if we got some of these surgeries done. The other reason 
reason I feel like it's getting more and more popular is because more and more celebrities and influencers are getting it done and being open and talking about it. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, on one hand, it's a good thing. The pros of it are that people are starting to be more transparent about what they've gotten done. First of all, people looked kind of silly when they lied about it. Let's be real. Physically changed, haven't you? The photographs of you, if I look at them. No, it's from... called adolescence. It's called growing and changing. Yeah, but even the shape of your face has changed. No, it has not. I've had no plastic surgery on my face. I feel like it made us more prone to compare ourselves to them. You know that saying, don't compare an apple to an orange? Well, I felt like before we would realize that somebody's had work done it's like you feel that you're comparing an apple to an apple but then when they come out and they're real about it it's like okay i'm not going to compare my natural self to somebody this had work done the con however is that if a younger girl looks up to an influencer or a celebrity chances are she's going to want to be exactly like them she's going to want to wear the things that she wears does the things she does says the things that she says so if she sees her idol talking about this chances are she's going to want to do the same thing that's another reason why i feel like teenagers these days are getting it which just that truly makes me so sad and breaks my heart because kids should not be worrying about this stuff i mean nobody should be worrying about this stuff but like especially children that sincerely breaks my heart basically it just gives people the idea to get the same things done i feel like this whole trend started really with the kardashians maybe it started before then but come when on. you think of cosmetic surgery who do you think of exactly? Not to mention the cost. This stuff is ridiculously expensive, and especially when it comes to Botox and filler. I saw a picture that showed how much is in these syringes. It's like a little tiny, not even a tablespoonful, not even like a teaspoonful, dude. It's like you're paying thousands for that tiny amount of liquid. And just think of where that money could go. It could go towards things that will actually help you. Things like therapy. And no, this is not about to segue into a better help ad. Did you think that's what was about to happen no <laughs> speaking of therapy i think it's important before somebody decides to do this to really consider is this going to actually help like is this really the solution or do i just need therapy do I just need to go to the gym? Something I also found was that a very large percentage of people that get cosmetic surgery actually have something called BDD, which is body dysmorphic disorder, which by definition is a mental illness involving obsessive focus on a perceived flaw in appearance. The flaw may be minor or imagined. You know what they say the treatment for this is? Therapy and or antidepressant medication, not cosmetic surgery. Do you think plastic surgery is a solution for body dysmorphia? It is not. If someone has a body dysmorphia, regardless of what it is, we do not operate. Another big issue is that a lot of the injectors, from what I found, also have BDD. So they could be giving people way too much filler or Botox, way more than they actually need. They don't see these people like how most people see them. They see them with this skewed perception of a brain that has this disorder. So that's even scarier. You know how I threw the gym in there that also maybe the gym could be the cure? That's something that I found really wild when I was researching this. People have been normalizing it so much that they compare it to things like the gym. That is so outlandish to me. First of all, the gym has so many health benefits. And I would know, I'm a certified exercise physiologist. I have my degree in exercise science. So I know all of the benefits, the health benefits, not just physically, but also mentally. Physically, it can prevent diseases like heart disease, osteoporosis, diabetes, just to name a very few. And also, it is so good for helping with things like depression, anxiety, and then people compared it to makeup, which is like makeup doesn't cost thousands of dollars just to put on your face one time. Also, that doesn't completely change your anatomy for the rest of your life. Like these comparisons are just, I don't, I don't get it, man. Also, the gym will build your confidence like no other because in my opinion, nothing can build your confidence like working for something and sticking to your word and being disciplined and doing something that you don't want to do because you said you would do it and you're disciplined enough to stick with that. There is nothing like delayed gratification and earning something, which is something that I feel like this generation really lacks. And maybe I sound kind of old right now, but that's the other thing. I feel like a lot of this has come from the idea that getting old is like, bad or negative thing like growing older is not a negative thing and people try to say especially for women that that's such a bad thing but it's like growing older is a privilege that is denied to many growing older is such a beautiful thing you recently said that you're you're not afraid of getting older that you even can't wait to see yourself old tell us about that mentality i love it you got to because i mean it, you gotta just accept it. it's gonna happen no matter what we're gonna get old so i want to embrace it you know when you look in the mirror and you see all that life on your face and you see that it's it's you've earned it also why does everyone want to look the same 
-hmm. Can you tell me our differences are what make us unique? Now I'm about to get very cheese sandwich on you, but bear with me. It's true. Our differences make us who we are. Think about a world where you could only eat pizza every day for the rest of your life for every meal. What a boring ass world that would be. And no, I'm not trying to compare people to food or pizza, but I'm just saying differences are the spice of life. That's what makes life fun and beautiful. And we should embrace that. We should embrace our differences and our uniqueness and not just try to be freaking clones of each other. Because what kind of world is that? That scares me. That's a scary world. I don't want to live in a world like that. No, thank you. Have I ever thought about doing it? Well, of course I have. Because that's just the society we live in. There's always going to be something that's going to try to make you feel like you're not good enough and like you need to improve and change and fix this and fix that. And it's sad. But after researching and watching positive influencers who expose it for the toxicity that it may have, I changed my mind instantly. Honestly, I just learned to embrace things that don't match up to society standards. I know once again, we're about to get cheese sandwich and that may sound said than done, right? But it's true. I have learned to just love what I got. For example, I don't have huge mommy milkers. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I've gotten so many comments insulting me, calling me flat chested, call me whatever. They want to call me because they have nothing better to do with their lives. But I don't think that I need to change that at all. I have been asked this question a lot, like if I've ever thought about changing something specifically that. And there was a point in my life where I would look at other people and be like, is that how I'm supposed to look? But then I feel like when you see somebody that looks similar to you and they just love who they are, it rubs off on you. Have you ever been around somebody that's just so confident and you can tell they just love who they are? It's contagious. It makes you feel good. Just seeing somebody else not give in to this bullshit is refreshing and it makes it feel more normal to just love yourself for who you are. If if you didn't think that was cheesy, oh, here it comes. Confidence truly does come from within. Somebody could match every single one of society's standards and still not feel good about themselves, still not be confident. In my opinion, and I actually think most people's opinions, there could be somebody that matches little to none of these standards, but they are fully confident. They fully love themselves. They have that internal confidence. And that is way more attractive and lovely to be around than somebody that just physically looks like how you're supposed to look according to society. Which is made up and bullshit so let's talk about those standards real quick the reason why we shouldn't give in to these standards is because they're not even real they're always changing depending on what date and time you were alive or where at in the world you live or things like that depending on so many factors the standard could be so different like at one point in time it was attractive to be overweight because it represented wealth one point in time it was attractive to be super skinny and actually if you had a big butt people were like "Ooh, that's not attractive but isn't that different now oh yeah that is way different now and that proves my point that rests my case that this shit isn't real it's all made up and why is it made up well because people profit off of your insecurities the more insecure you are and the more insecurities you have the more money someone else can make off of that and that's just the sad reality of it all they want you to be insecure that's why the media throws all of these messages out like if you have acne that's a bad thing you need to have bigger boobs you need to have a bigger butt you need to have this and that and if you don't then you're not good enough which is just not true it's literally just all just because somebody decided one day hey this is attractive and that's not they could easily just switch it and they have and we've seen that time and time again I know, like I said, it's easier said than done to just accept and love yourself. I get that because it is really hard to love yourself when you're constantly being fed these messages that you shouldn't love yourself. But the odds are you weren't born hating yourself or something about yourself. Like, for example, if you hate your nose, chances are you weren't born hating your nose. And I bet if your whole life and everybody around you constantly was telling you, wow, you have such a perfect nose, like your nose is so beautiful, you probably would actually love your nose. I'm guessing. Maybe there's a slight chance that you wouldn't if society deemed your nose as beautiful and like the ideal nose you probably love it so these beauty standards are just always changing they're ever changing it's forever gonna be always going in a cycle that's why it can just be so dangerous because external validation can be dangerous i'm not saying i know it's almost unrealistic to not totally feel like kind of good when somebody compliments you or when you get a little bit of external validation because that's just how humans have been raised almost that's like human nature is to feel like you want to be approved by other people otherwise like back in the caveman days if you didn't have a pack if you were isolated then you probably weren't going to survive so i understand it's like a survival mechanism that we want other people to like us and approve of us and we want that validation however it can be so dangerous because really when you value somebody else's opinion over your own you're just crushing yourself you're just making yourself like you're not important but you are and to say that 
somebody else how they see you or perceive you is more important than how you feel about yourself that is a slippery slope my friend i really hope that you take something from this video and you do learn to love yourself because you deserve to and maybe like i said the gym could help you do that the gym has helped me love myself so much so if you want to know how i got a bbl with no surgery then make sure you go check out this video right here and subscribe to join the swole squad